once there was shame, now there's great pride in having made back the money I lost on Carve. So I finished down $41,900 on Carve yesterday and I'm up $41,700 on it today. Now, had I held all the way through the low of after hours on my position yesterday, I would have been down over 400 grand. It was the right move to cut the loss, let it go, and then come back tomorrow when it showed a good opportunity. That's what I did. I got green, had a couple other trades. I'll break down during the recap, but overall, I uh, recouped the, the 15,000 total that I finished uh, down yesterday. So I was down 15,000 on the day. So back in the green today, great way to finish the week, but whew, what a wild ride these last couple days. Market has been, this week has been crazy. Uh, man, it's really been wild. And, and Carve is still holding up here at 36. Uh, I mean, this, and then you got SGOC. We've got some wild stuff. So let's get into the recap. I hope you enjoy it. As always, in case you didn't already know, day trading is risky. Most beginner traders lose money. Most traders in general struggle and fail. So you should assume if you're thinking about learning how to trade that you'll lose money. And with that assumption in mind, trade in a simulator before you ever put real money on the line. I wish I had done that. I didn't. I jumped in the deep end. I started losing money. Learn from the mistakes of others. Trade in a sim. Enjoy the recap and I'll see you first thing tomorrow morning. Friday, so that means tomorrow's Saturday. I'll see you first thing on Monday. All right, see you then. All right, everyone, so I'm gonna do my uh, recap here. So this is my main account and um, Yesterday, if you recall, I did a, a second recap. So I finished the day down $15,000 yesterday because I went from up about 8,000 on uh, Carve to down $41,000 on the stock. I, I lost $50,000 in two trades, three trades on it. So that was pretty discouraging. Uh, but take note that today I'm up $41,000 on CARB, so I got it back. Um, now, it's by coincidence that I happen to be up almost the exact amount that I was down yesterday on CARB. Uh, I could tell you to the penny, um, out of curiosity, how much I was down yesterday on CARB, because um, it, is, it is darn close. Um, and I was up 47000 on CARB today, and I gave back about 20% off the top. Uh, and, and that was kind of my cue to say, okay, enough's enough. Let's keep it green and walk away. And so um, what I am going to be, um, uh, what I'm gonna be doing today is shutting everything down as soon as I finish this recap so I don't do what I did yesterday, which is, um, you know, kind of, well, keep trading and see something, get FOMO, and then have a bad, have a bad trade. So yesterday I was down $41,959.44. So within three hundred, uh, within two hundred dollars today, I'm up forty-one thousand seven hundred fifty-eight on Carve. So my trades on Carve started, as you would imagine, um, cautiously, cautiously trading at pre-market, uh, basically. And just to recap for those that missed it, where I lost on it yesterday, um, I took uh, two big losses on it. I took a twenty thousand dollar loss on it, like right in this area. Now, now, first I had a $3,000 winner and I went from up 34,000 on the day to up 37,000. Uh, then I got back in right here with 20,000 shares for that rip through 38, 39 and 40, hull up, lost 20 grand. Got back in it right here, lost 20 grand again, give or take. Uh, why did I get in for the high day break? Let's look at Newegg. Newegg uh, is the setup that I was thinking was gonna happen. That break right there, that rip through the high. Now, I'll say that on Newegg, um, this had a bit more consolidation coming up to the high, but it did still surge through that high of 71 and it went up to almost 80 bucks. So that's what I thought was gonna happen. I really thought that was gonna happen on Carve yesterday. And so I lost, I stepped up to the plate with pretty big size. I mean, I thought if it didn't do it here, for sure it was gonna do it here because this was a five minute setup. It's a, like a cup and handle. Anyways, I was wrong and I ate the loss, which was the right move because if I had held 20,000 shares at $38 all the way down to 28, I would have been down 200 grand. If I held it down to $18, I would have been down $400,000. Oh 
only for it to come back up this morning, back to flat. So you could say, Ross, why'd you stop out yesterday? Well, because I didn't want to be down $400,000. I'd rather take the loss, you know, take the punches and move on to the next trade. So that's, uh, so that's what I did, took the losses yesterday. I finished the day down $15,000 from up 37, discouraging, but down 15,000 is uh, for me not bad. My daily average is about 20,000 in profit. So down 15,000 is less than one good day. I can recover from that fairly easily and I did today uh, for sure. So uh, as this started to squeeze up uh, pre-market, I'll go back to the five minute chart. I was like, I am not gonna buy this right into this double top at 3070. There's no way I'm gonna buy into the double top. It's, well, I just did that twice yesterday. I'll let it pull back. So it went up to the double top and then it formed a pullback. And so this pullback, I believe it was this one right here, formed the first dip entry. This was the second. I was long then at the open and this was where I made the majority of my profit today. That was, um, that was good, however, Right up here, I added for the break through 39 and I gave back. I went from up 34,000 and lost 14,000 and was up only 11,000 on the day. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I was up 34,000. I lost 11,000 and was up, I think, 18 or 19,000. And then I got back in for the break of this pivot at 36.46. And we got the break, halted, um, going up, resumed higher, a dip and a rip, tried to catch a couple more trades up there. Uh, was up 47,000, gave back a little off the top, and at that point said, okay, enough's enough. You're green, you're in good shape. Let's finish the week right here, up 40, uh, 41,000 on Carve. Galt, I had a nice trade on this break of volume weighted average price right here, $7,000 on that. Tried Newegg, made $2,000 on my first trade for the breakthrough uh, 56, got back in and lost on the second trade down 396. Cone, tried uh, to go long on that as Carve was squeezing up right here, got stopped out for $900 loss. Um, not a big deal. Uh, did not really have the sympathy momentum that I thought it would. So that's my, uh, that's my recap. Uh, quick, brief, but you know, that's where I'm at. So green on two names, red on two names, but finishing uh, the week here uh, with, with really nice, some really nice trades on, on Carve and um, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with that. It's a great finish to the week. So that's where I end the week in the big account. And you know what's interesting? I don't know how much I'm up on the month. I don't know. You know why I don't know? Because I haven't looked. I don't know how many consecutive green days I've had. Well, I know I was red yesterday. But going into that, I didn't know how many consecutive green days I had. You know why? It doesn't matter. As long as I sit down here each day just with a fresh mind, ready to trade and make the most of the opportunities that present itself, the profits will follow. I don't need to obsessively look at my profit loss ratio or my metrics at this point in my career. I can look at them on a monthly basis. I can go and import them and we can review it, but I don't need to be doing it every single day. Because unfortunately what that creates for me is that emotional trap where I then know exactly how much I've lost and then therefore how much I need to make back and it just starts to get me um, fixated and focused on the wrong elements of trading. The right elements are good quality setups. And I did have a little bit of a bias on Carve today because of the loss yesterday, but I said, you know what, let's set it aside. Even though yesterday was a red shooting star candle and a very clear reversal, it's up from eight nineteen dollar low back to $30 pre-market. This thing is moving. So it's worth, it's worth trading. And can you manage your risk? Can you get a profit cushion? Once I was up 9,000, I said, okay, I've got a profit cushion. Let's see what we can do today. And we got some nice trades. Uh, so that's uh, the large account recap. And I will do the small account recap uh, in just a moment. All right, thanks for tuning in. As always, in case you didn't already know, trading is risky. Most beginner traders, even experienced traders, lose money. There's a lot of reasons that you lose money in the market. Trading is risky, but more than anything else, it's the emotions in trading. It's the frustration, the revenge trade, and the anger. And all of that can culminate and turn into huge red days. Could I have yesterday emotionally impulsive said, no way am I selling 20,000 shares for a $20,000 loss. I'm going to hold it. Next thing I know, I'm down 40,000, 60, 80, 100, 150, 200. And now it's, what do you do? Now I can't possibly let it go. And what happens if 
you know, today we found out they did a secondary offering and it's back at five bucks. Those are the traps in the market. You've refused to cut your losses and then the losses get bigger and bigger and bigger. So FOMO Friday today, 1 p.m. with Ted and Diane. Tune in if you're a Warrior Pro student and you've had any struggle at any time with emotions in your trading, get into that FOMO Friday. I'm gonna be in the FOMO Friday session um, with I believe Roberto, Selena, and maybe a few others next Friday. So we're gonna do a, um, a larger group session, which I think will be um, a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. So make sure you tune in for that, but, uh, but get in there this Friday and, and enjoy it. It, it kind of helps, you know, clear the slate, get you in a nice mindset as you finish the week. All right, so with that, uh, thank you guys for tuning in and I'm gonna go do my small account challenge recap. I hope you really enjoyed that video and make sure you hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Our goal is to hit 1 million subscribers this year, but we won't get there without your help. So please, please, please hit that subscribe button.